Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hey, welcome everybody to our HFES 2018 preview bonus episode. This will be launching, I guess, on, uh, what are we, Saturday night, early Sunday morning, I guess. And we're still figuring out a time. We want to make sure this is timely and relevant to you. Um, what this is, is a preview of the magic that is HFES 2018. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag. Uh, yeah, we got we got a lot to talk about today. No news stories. This is going to be in place of your normal Human Factors cast episode. Uh, we Don't worry, though. Don't worry. We have a lot of content coming out of the conference this week. Uh, we are recording this on a, on a Monday so this is right after last week's episode, or I guess this week's episode, depending on when you're listening. I don't know. Uh, but through the magic of editing, we are wearing the same clothes. Uh, so that's why we have these on anyway. Don't we, worry. We watched <laughs> them. It's fine. We are going to be previewing our interview schedule with uh, some of the HFES people. And uh, we also got – we're going to talk about some of the stuff that we find most exciting or that we are most excited to for HFES. So uh, – yeah, it's our quick be, picks. It's going to be good. Our quick picks, if you will. So if you're listening to this, hopefully it's like a Sunday. You're on, on your plane to Philadelphia or, you know, maybe you're going later this week. And hopefully um, they turned on the air pressure. Hopefully they turned on the air pressure. You're not going to bleed out your nose, your your eye holes, your ear holes, all those holes. Uh, <laughs> we're, uh, let, you know, what? <laughs> we should probably just get into it before we get ourselves in trouble. But, Blake, it's been a week since we talked to each other. I know so much banter, so many things have oh happened. Oh, my gosh. What's going on with Goodness you? Gracious. Do we have anything to talk about? Man, I don't have all that much to talk about, except for I'm really excited to be on a plan on my way to HFES at this moment in time. I am, too. So, yeah, we are probably traveling in transit as you're listening to the show or uh, as this thing launches. Um so that's really exciting. This could be our last words that are broadcast out to anyone. We're going to set this on a schedule, and uh, if the airplane gods choose, you know, we're, we're this is just we didn't make morbid it. before we but even get started. <laughs> oh. But in the case we do make it, we're really excited, and we're really excited to have you guys there with us. Uh, and if you can't be there, don't worry. We are going to be breaking down as much of it as we can from the site so we do adopt this no human factors practitioner left behind we want to make sure we are covering stuff that is interesting relevant and uh what else there's there's other criteria but interesting relevant fun fun exciting things that teach people things and if you want to know more or reach out to us about when and what we're going to go see or if you, there's things you'd like to just try and cover if we can you can reach out to us through slack Please do, but until then, we are going to be covering some of the stuff coming out of HFES. First and foremost, I want to cover our interview schedule. Now, this, again, we are recording on Monday the 24th, um, but so so some of this could change, but a lot of this we are trying to get ironed out. I just want to go over some of these days, times, people, uh, and what what they're talking about and what we're going to be talking to them about. Uh, so that way you guys can kind of get an idea of maybe when to show up to the human factors podcast booth and, and kind of uh, watch us interview these people and make fools out of ourselves live. It'll be great. <laughs> It'll be, and a we good hope time. to see you there. We do hope to see you there. Maybe pull us aside afterwards and, and, uh, and say hi. And, and we're happy to, uh, to say hi. Maybe we should get some stickers, Blake. We should get some stickers and some <sighs> signs. We should get some, and some stickers. Dang. Some cheese. All right. Uh, anyway, so let's see here. So first up on Monday night, this is Ergo X night. Uh, this is the first. We have Dave Rimple and Chris Reed. Now, these are ErgoX chairs and organizers, and we're hoping to talk to them uh, from 5.30 to 6 p.m. at night, right before the uh, gala. We'll be running happens. to the gala. Yeah, we will be. Fresh uh, with lots of knowledge dropped on our brains. Fresh with lots of, lo- lots of knowledge. So that'll be fun. Uh, also on Monday night uh, from 6 to 6.30, so we'll really be running to the gala after this, is uh, Sudakar Rajulu, and he is the Ergo X keynote speaker. So super exciting stuff there. I think he's talking about some exoskeletons maybe. I'm assuming, yeah. I mean, because uh, <laughs> that's what Ergo X is all about is a lot of like ergonomics and exoskeleton suits. And I'm pretty sure that Sudakar is from... NASA, I think Johnson Space Center. Yeah, that's so it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be interesting application for sure. That'll be fun stuff. Uh, on Tuesday morning, we have Nick Adkins, and this guy uh, you might recognize his name from the Pink Socks Initiative. He basically uh, wears pink socks. 
um, and tries to initiate conversation with others. So if you see a lot of pink socks at HFES this year, that's why. He's the guy. And I'm trying a- to make sure I bring my pink socks for Tuesday and don't wear them before Tuesday. Yeah, so uh, we'll you'll, you'll find us with pink socks for sure, uh, and we'll be talking to Nick Adkins about how pink socks can help human factors as a, uh, as a whole. Uh, on Tuesday at 5 p.m. to 5.30, we are going to be talking to Nancy Cook, who's a past president and uh, is part of the President Forum. Um, let's see. That's, again, Tuesday from 5 to 5.30. We have Claire Dickinson from 5.30 to 6 o'clock. This is the CIEHF Human Factors President, and uh, we certainly didn't know what that was. We're going to be talking to her about CIEHF, which is the Chartered Institute of Ergonomics and Human Factors, finding out what that's all about. Uh, on Wednesday, this, these are all tentative still, so we're, we're still ironing out the times. Um, but on Wednesday, we are talking to Valerie Rice, who is the current HFES president. We'll talk about what kind of uh, things happened over the last year um, and uh, what kind of things to look forward to. Uh, well, that's, that's more Kermit's deal. But we're, we're still going to talk about you know, what kind of changes we've seen in HFES over the past year. It'd be kind of cool to know what they, how the structure of the organization kind of works. I mean, does she leave things behind for Kermit to kind of ponder on or think about taking on and that kind of good stuff? Yeah. Uh, and then we have, after Valerie, we have, uh, I'm going to mess up this name. Hopefully we'll get some clarification before they're on the show. It's either Sylvian or Sylvain um, Bruni. And this is, he's a diversity, he or she is a diversity panelist. Yes. Not quite sure. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Uh, and then Marilyn Mobley, also on the diversity panel. So that will be exciting to talk about how diversity is impacted in human factors. Uh, because we talked about diversity briefly when um, uh, Brian was at uh, UXPA Boston. That's true. He had the like, diversity and inclusion portion right. that he had gone to. And also, too, like Nick Atkins is actually the one that's going to be chairing that panel. So it would be right. cool to kind of get his insight before. And then I guess this is almost after the panels happen, I do believe. Yeah, it is. So, so in, And you know what? That, that coverage to me from UXPA Boston was probably the most interesting, um, the diversity stuff. So I'm really interested in this. Uh, and that is, again, on Wednesday, tentative time at about 1045. We'll, we'll kind of see about that one um but do look out for that one we'll we'll post any updates in our slack uh and on social media on wednesday at 5 to 5 30 p.m we have tony andres uh this is a past president hansen award winner hansen award winner i'll say that again and has developed many initiatives in hfes so he'll be fun to talk to um wednesday 5 30 to 6 p.m we have micah Ensley. This one, this one will be fun. Uh, you might know Micah from her uh, five levels of situation awareness. Right now, she is currently serving as the chair of government affairs. We'll kind of talk about her role as a liaison for human factors in government. That's uh, gonna be such an interesting talk. It will be because uh, you know we'll be we'll be up kind of by DC, Philly. You know, and I mean that's something we we're like kind of in the middle of the trenches in with the work we do during our day jobs and starting to see how she's trying to integrate you know human factors more into just government affairs in general and what that means for everybody. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. Uh, let's see here on Thursday, uh, the fourth at again tentative time ten forty five we have Susan Hallbeck who is the incoming HFES president after Kermit. Uh, so we'll be kind of super forward looking with that one. What what can we expect from HFES? I guess a year from now. And then uh, we have Peter Hancock Thursday uh, from five to five thirty, uh, and this is a plenary panelist on school safety. So that'll be that'll be an interesting topic that I haven't really thought a whole bo- whole lot about personally. Well, I haven't thought of the human factors applications right. into school safety, especially like I think the talk the talk is labeled something with violence in it, and I know we've like had a few tragedies in the past year. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, which is hard to believe that it's almost been a year. But anyway, so it'll be cool to get from like a practitioner's perspective what can be done because I know we've we've all gone through the throes of dealing with like the various things that have been tossed out in media, like what from a, you know, maybe a scientist's perspective could be done. So it'll be cool. Yeah, also on Thursday at some point, uh, still working out a schedule for this one, we have Philane Wyrick, Amanda Klinger, and Tam- Tamara Griffith, also from the uh, school safety panel. Um, so those will be also interesting. And then Thursday at 5.45 to 6.15, I think maybe we have uh, women's panels, women's leader panel, women leaders panelists. How many times did I have to say that? Uh, Ellen Bass and Gabriella Hancock. So 
Uh, lots of interesting things. We also have an interview with Kermit Davis, who will be the upcoming HFES president and who someone who has been absolutely pitiful, uh, pit, <laughs> pitiful, absolutely pivotal in our um, uh, collaboration with HFES this year and uh, someone who has basically kind of helped us organize all these interviews. So it'll be fine. It'll be great to finally sit down and have a chat with Kermit. Yeah, it'd be cool to kind of talk about how our relationship came to be what it is and then like where we see ourselves going from here, but also too, like I'm excited to hear about what Kermit's looking forward to doing for HFES. Yeah. I'm really excited to see what HFES has to offer for the next year. Um, just based on his interaction with us alone. I mean, we can tell just internally that Kermit is pretty driven to kind of reach outside of the box and, um, try new things that perhaps haven't been tried before in the past, like reaching out to a Human Factors podcast and get them to podcast live and interview a bunch of folks at HFES. So Yeah, which is incredible. And he's also very forward thinking, looking to want more interaction with kind of the youth, people that are coming up and people that are more, you know, ingrained in listening to podcasts or like being part of social media and all that kind of good stuff. So it's, yeah. a, it's a great look for HFES. Yeah, super, super awesome. Super excited about all this. But Blake, I want to know what you are excited about. Oh, I'm so excited. Actually, I didn't put this in the notes, but now that we've gone over the speaker list, I'm really excited about the fact that there's so much going on from two, basically two panels that we, that we know of, and I'm sure there's some more talks that are centered around these topics, but inclusion in the human factors and ergonomic society. So both from the women leaders in HFES, and I'm assuming like kind of the outcome of that is like, what's the path that we took? What can we do to get more women involved in, in human factors or ergonomics or both? And then the diverse diversity, the same kind of thing, like what can be done to really continue to foster like getting different voices into the field because I think it's only going to, it's the best way for one, the field to grow in terms of breadth, but also as, as well, like get it out there in a lot more companies and have them understand really what we do as scientists. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So I'm uh, super stoked for those two panels. Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited too to kind of sit down and talk with them about all that stuff. Super interesting stuff. Um, I am going to jump into my number one here. Or I guess my number two, I'm really my number one is the interviews. Number two, so we're going to kind of go over some of the things that we're excited about. We may or may not get to attend these things, um, but I figure, you know, this is a survey. This is a preview bonus episode, so we want to make sure we're covering uh, uh, the breadth of HFES, so that way maybe there's something you didn't know about uh, that you can go and attend. Um, but I know a lot of... Junior listeners listen to the show, uh, and when I say junior, I don't mean it in a derogatory term. I mean it in the sense that you are junior in your career, early career professionals, let's say. There is, at HFES, an on-site career center, um, and uh, they are open from uh, 1 to 6 on Monday, 8.30 to 6, or, well, I guess 8.30 to 5, basically, every day. Uh, and basically... Any employers who have a job posting, they are or registered to search resumes. You can go there and interview with these folks. And I know you know people who have found success and have found careers through this event at HFES. Yeah, I think one of them may or may not be in this room. You are sitting right next to one, my friend. I actually found my current place of employment through this uh, on-site career center. So, which is epic. Number one, first and foremost, I'm really excited about this. If you're, if you are an early career professional looking to, um, you know, get yourself out there, print out a couple of your resumes and drop them by, and they have interviews live there. They'll give you a call. You go in, sit down, talk about your stuff, and then you know if they like you, they'll bring you on for an on-site interview. And this is the best place to go because they are clearly looking for people who are in human factors and. You, as a human factors practitioner, are there, So, and, and you're in that mode. You're at your best, best self. Like, you're talking about the stuff that you're, you know, in, 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 you're talking about the stuff in your career. It's just uh, a happy sort of um, place to be, I would say. I like it. And one thing, <laughs> if you're watching us on YouTube or if you're listening to us through the, the podcast that we normally distribute, if you're a grad student or if you're somebody who's just interested in human factors and you're going to be there and you're early on in your career, maybe you don't even have your first job, take a shot at putting together some kind of resume. doesn't have to be the most perfect thing ever. doesn't have to like include everything you've ever done. Just take a shot at putting it, putting it together. 
submit it, and if you get a callback, go have the interview. It doesn't matter if it's not the best interview of your life, but this kind of experience is something that you don't get anywhere else, and these and HFES is providing us access and people access to trying out and understanding, okay, what, what am I really good at in interviews? Where do I need to improve? And how can my resume improve? And what types of questions are potential employers going to ask you? Exactly, yeah. So now you're, you're, you're ahead prepared. of the game so far. Even if you're still in grad school, you're not even looking for a job for the next few years. Like still like practicing that stuff is the most important thing to go ahead and do. Hey, quick note. I wasn't really looking for a job when I got hired. There you go. So, you know, you never know. Yeah, exactly. You never know. All right, so that's what I'm excited about. That's that's my number two. What's your number two, Blake? My number two. So I'm going to kind of push two things together because I just realized that they are separate. But, okay, so there's a poster session. So this is technical posters that will be presented at a dedicated session on Tuesday night from 5 to 7 in Salon E. So I think this is much more from industry. So this is not sure. our, your typical, like, university lab posters. And for me, when I went to the healthcare symposium earlier this year, this is where I had the most fun where I got to interact and see, like, where is technology taking, in in this case, where is technology taking healthcare? And what kind of research is being done? What products are being put together and stuck out there in the world? And what impacts are they projected to have? And it was just a lot of fun to really sit there and, you know, interact with people that have put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears from a human factors perspective into innovative ideas, products, research lines, all that kind of stuff. And hopefully we'll be able to talk to some people into, you know, giving us a five or 10 minute interview with them as well. Yeah, that'd be great. We can, we, we hope I'll just let you guys in on the secret. HFES is basically happening now. So, uh, to let you all in on the, on the inside baseball, if you will, we are hoping to get a couple of, uh, on the fly interviews as well from poster presenters, anyone who basically wants to share their research with the world. We are hoping to provide them with an opportunity to do so. Um, I know that that is a Tuesday night. I think we are actually booked in interviews, but we might be able to swing by the last couple minutes of it. Uh, we also have Woodrow Gustafson, who is one of our field reporters for Kai. He's been on the show several times. He is actually going to be on site with us. Um, hopefully he can help gather some extra bonus content we're hoping to release an audio only episode for sort of these on the fly hey what what brings you to hfes what kind of research you doing that kind of stuff so um i'm hoping i'm hoping we can put something together for you if not you know we're we're not making any promises here uh we're we're gonna be busy bodies there so uh we are hoping to put something together though for you so there's that yeah. poster sessions yep yeah. and so the other one the other one that i'm excited about for poster sessions anyway is the university lab poster sessions this is something i did when i was in grad school and i think it's just important to go and talk to talk to people that are coming up in the field and kind of you know give be friendly and let them know like what what's going on in the human factors world when you're like in the working world and just ask questions and kind of get to know people and they're up up and coming in the field yeah yeah it's uh it's I love the poster sessions. I love just going and hanging out. And uh, my favorite part of the poster sessions is now they start serving. They have started serving alcohol. So you can can walk around um, networking really effectively. Uh, You know, they want to loosen you up. I mean, alcohol, like, let's be fair. Alcohol is basically flowing at HFES now, or at least it was last year. Like, you could go anywhere, get some alcohol, sit in and... uh, Enjoy yourself in a poster session. See, it's been a while since I've been to HFES, so I actually don't know. Oh, Blake, we're going to have a good time. Oh, goodness. We're going to have a good time. (laughs) This is going to hurt. All right, Nick, what else are you excited about? Okay, so the next thing I am excited about is um, some of the events going on here. Uh, So I'll I'll just go over these and let you know what's happening and when. Uh, So we have a new members and first-time First timer attendees welcome. So this is a special event for new members and first timers um, that'll be on Monday from six to six thirty. Uh, obviously, we can't make it. We're not first timers, so we're not welcome there. Uh, but if it is your first time, you can go and hang out there. Uh, let's see here. We have the opening reception. This is the gala that we keep talking about. This is where you go and network with um, a bunch of people. And I would highly, highly recommend that. If you are going to HFES, go to this. This is, it's weird that they put it at a Monday night, but I guess it's not because it kind of loosens you up for the week. Um, it's really, it's it's a whole lot of fun. You, you get to sit at tables with people you don't know, or perhaps that you do, um, mingle with old friends and new ones, and kind of get a sense of who's who and who does what, and, and the kind of breadth and uh, scope of the different 
research areas within human factors. It's it's really great. I met last year at our table a uh, UAV racer um, guy. What an unmanned aerial vehicle racer? Yeah, is it like a drone racer? <laughs> doing the wrong just, thing. I know, right? What are we doing? Goodness. Um, so that's that's Monday night. I highly recommend going to that. There's a mentor mentee brown bag luncheon, um, and that is on Tuesday from twelve thirty to two, I believe. That's a serious um, lunch. So yeah, no kidding. This is uh, just to give you a sense of what this is. This is early career professionals and those in career transition to develop mentoring relationships with established pro- professionals in the HFE field. So that's an exciting opportunity, especially if you're looking for someone to take you under their wing and kind of show you the ropes. Um, uh, I just said the early career professionals luncheon, the reception. So there's there's a luncheon and there's a reception. Um for the reception, you do have to indicate on your registration. So this is something that you would have had to do before. Um, and then there's also a student reception uh, that takes place in the Liberty Ballroom from 5.30 to 6.30. Uh, and that is also another great opportunity. But I will say, I will say, in addition to all these, there are a ton of unplanned events that happen, or I guess they're they're planned, but they're not officially sanctioned by HFES around the city. So you'll have like a UX meetup. You'll have um, various other opportunities for networking. And when I say networking, I'm truly meaning networking and not getting drunk off your ass. This is this is literally an opportunity to talk with other people. Um, that well, I mean, you do that too, right? But <laughs> at the same time, at the same time, you're getting business cards and getting that, phone numbers. All I gotta. That's why I'm always so tired when I go out networking, Blake. <laughs> He's so, the worst. <laughs> so there are all these opportunities and uh, lots of offsite opportunities for uh, getting to know people in your career, in your career, in your area of interest. There's there's a lot of I'm already networking. <laughs> he's, he's been networking. Since, <laughs> I've been like, networking since I got on the since plane. Two thirty. Oh goodness. Uh, yeah, but uh, if you are interested in any of those offsite networking events, um, do stop by the podcast booth. We might know of a couple. So. Uh, do stop by. We'll figure it out. All right, Blake. What what do you, what are you next excited for? My next excited <laughs> thing is ErgoX. I'm really excited to be going to ErgoX. And for those that don't know, this is like kind of focusing on ergonomics in exoskeleton development. Uh, luckily enough, through this partnership with HFES, we're actually going to get to go and talk to some of these people, yeah. take a look around, get to interview people that both were chairs and keynote speaker from this event. I don't know. I'm just super stoked to see what is going on in the world of exoskeletons because we've talked about so much of it over the past past probably year and a half. And I honestly did not realize that there was such a market for them. But there truly is from like rehabilitating people to be able to walk for the first time to an industry when we're having to lift heavy things all the way to the military applications that there are. Yeah. It's just going to be incredible. I mean, they're looking at, it's going to be a bunch of different panels, of course. So they'll be looking at answering questions like, what are the visions for the future of exoskeletons beyond just Hollywood? How can we use science fiction to help us kind of, you know, impact what we've, what we're working on now in exoskeletons and what you can do for safety, reliability, and effectiveness when it comes to developing exoskeletons and exosuits that can be used by an everyday consumer. So it's just going to be a lot of fun to kind of hear where these kind of grandiose ideas are maybe going to go. And this is another kind of technical event where you'll, we'll be actually able to see some of the products like yeah. the Robo Glove and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm really excited about ErgoX too. And I mean, we often talk about HFES in in uh, broad strokes, right? When we say HFES, we do mean ErgoX as well. Um, I've never actually been to ErgoX myself. It's always been sort of an added expenditure that I, you know, for one reason or another either couldn't afford or the company wouldn't support me to do so. Um, but now we are we are able to cover this, and, and it's going to be exciting. It's just one more additional thing that we can cover and bring to you guys um, that, that no human factors practitioner, ergonomics practitioner left behind in Nobody. this case. No one. All right. So uh, you're excited for ErgoX. I am going to jump into a, uh, a talk, or I guess rather a discussion panel. And I'm actually really That's excited it. for Yeah. Um, Hopefully I can make this. I know it's running up kind of against one of our interviews, so I might be a couple minutes. You might have to set up there, Blake, or I might have to leave this a couple minutes early. But um, I'm looking forward to motion sickness in virtual environments, and uh, that that comes as no surprise to anyone who listens to the show. I I love VR, and I I think this is a problem that we actually talked about last week on the show with the uh, Oculus Go and training the Walmart Oh, that's right. It's almost like I was wearing the same clothes, and I've forgotten about um, it. Yeah, it's almost like you know we just talked about it 
a, a week ago. Uh, so yeah, we're I, I'm excited about that. It's going to be a discussion panel. Uh, I have no idea what it entails, but I'm going to show up and I'm going to be eager to listen to what experts in the field have to say. Yeah, it'll be interesting to know what you come away with from that one because I know you are really interested in VR, of course, but it is it is kind of topical because we just talked about that with regards to what do you do in a training situation with somebody that is motion sick. Right. Hey, more inside baseball. We are going to do a recap God, episode. I love baseball, don't you? I know, I do. We are going to... I actually don't follow sports that closely. <laughs> <laughs> Inside baseball. Uh, we are planning to do a recap episode at the end of the conference, whether that's Friday or the Monday that we get back. I don't know. We're still working on scheduling for that one. We'll see how Monday through Thursday goes. We'll see how shot our voices are by then. But we are planning to do kind of a recap episode to kind of go over our top three things. Um, hoping to have Woodrow on the show for that. Uh, to where we kind of recap the conference and see kind of what, like our normal coverage, right? We have this normal coverage where you went to Healthcare Symposium, I've gone to HFES, and we kind of give a survey of what's been going on. We're hoping to do just a bonus episode of that because I know a lot of our listeners do like that stuff. I know a lot of you guys like to listen to um, kind of the the varying perspectives on, on what's out there. So that is another bonus episode that we are planning to do for you. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. All right, Blake, what do you have in here? So I'm really excited about this. Unfortunately, I think it's going to run up into some of our uh, some of our interview time, but it's a talk that I think is fun to think about from a human factors perspective. So it's the challenges of AI and human factors. So this is from the Cognitive Engineering and Decision Making Panel. And it's just basically going to be a discussion about a lot of different papers that have come up recently about how do you really fit human factors into artificial intelligence? What impacts do do we as practitioners need to have? What impacts is AI going to have on our jobs as a whole? And I, I don't know. I think the more that we start talking about these kind of things and becoming aware of really, excuse me, what's going on in the AI space and also trying to figure out what complex problems we can solve from the human perspective using AI, it's, it's just going to be a lot of fun to hear how people are kind of tackling it right now. And from what the speakers look like, I mean, we've got everybody from somebody from the Office of Naval Research to people from Georgia Tech. It's just going to be a wide variety of both like research and industry in one place. Yeah, uh, that's going to be a really exciting panel. And I'm, I, what time is it at? It's at 1045 to 1215. So it's a, it's a short one. Oh, okay. So we, hmm, I hope we can get coverage of that one. Cause it, is, be, it is on Thursday. So we'll, we'll be cutting it close. Cause I know we got some kind of backup on y- Thursday. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're going to try to attend as many of these as we can. Um, hopefully we can get some of our field correspondents out there. Yeah, that's right. Because we've got a couple of listeners that will be there that may or may not be interested in these topics as well. Yeah. Let me tell you now, if you're a listener of the show and want to be on to tell us about your experience, like I said, we are planning on doing that bonus episode. So perhaps um, we can sort of enlist you to take some copious notes like we do when we go and uh, kind of talk about the things that you see. And if one of these topics that we're talking about on the show that perhaps maybe we can't get to because we're doing interviews, um, if you attend, that would be that'd be awesome. And just stop by the booth and let us know that you're interested. That would be that'd be great. We'll figure it out from there. We would love that. Um, so am I good? Can I can I talk about the next thing? Because I'm really excited do it, about sir, this. What you got? What's next? I'm really excited about this stuff, although I'm kind of sad about this stuff because I know I won't be able to make any of it. Um, The technical tours. Oh, man. These are like some of the best parts. (laughs) I know. Like the last one we had, we had a listener on. It it was was Logan. It was Logan, right? Logan. And where? Where'd he go? The Toyota, Toyota factory? Toyota factory. I was so jealous that I didn't go that year. Uh, I know. it sounded like so much fun. But anyway, what are yeah. you excited for? Well, so last year at Austin, Texas, Logan went to the uh, Toyota factory floor, and he was telling us about his experience. If you want to hear about that, you can go back and check out our bonus episode from 2017, uh, where Logan kind of breaks it down. One of them. I'm not sure. We did a couple bonus episodes last we year. We did a so. lot last year, yeah. <laughs> so, so good luck finding it. I mean, um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to post it in our Slack for you. Uh, but... The the technical tours this year being in Philadelphia, we have Boeing Philadelphia, and that's um, I guess I, I don't know the days of these. I don't know you you have to you have to sign up for these Tuesday, in advance, I think. October second, and ten fifteen to four p.m. Oh hey, it look there like. it is. There's the day. Yep, I'm I'm an idiot. That's, for anybody who's listening, I was reading that off of Nick's screen. I'm I'm an idiot. It's right in front of me. Yeah, Tuesday, October second, we got Boeing Philadelphia from ten fifteen to four p.m. Uh, these are a time commitment, but honestly, some of these technical tours are really valuable. Uh, if you go and actually see how the process is done, you can see a lot of opportunities for human factors improvement across all of the different. Um, 
different areas. domains that different are out domain, there. Yeah, yeah. And it's That's also really for. a good opportunity because I did that in San Diego at one point. I cannot remember where we went, but it was a good networking opportunity because that's how I actually connected with some of the people that I currently work with now. Yeah, it's a great it's a great opportunity to meet other people. Um, the next one is the ECRI Institute, and I, for the life of me, cannot figure out what ECRI actually stands for. Oh goodness! Um, but they looks like they focus on. Uh, Applied scientific research to discover medical procedures, devices, drugs, and processes. Oh, that's cool. Uh, all to improve patient care. I, I'm looking up the acronym. I can't find it, Blake. If you can find it, let me know. I, I don't know. Our, your Googling is probably just about as good as mine. Oh, there it is. Oh, I'm just kidding. Oh, you, you got me, Blake. You got me. <laughs> no, uh, it's literally not said anywhere. Not even in its Wikipedia page. I know. Hey, talk about human factors there. Scientific... Uh, I don't want to knock them because it's easy to kind of throw out acronyms, especially working in the military. I mean, we get it. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> so, if, if anybody gets it, we do. Well, it anyone, seems like they're doing a lot of amazing work, though. Like from it does. Di- disaster relief to you know medical care. Yeah. So this will be this will probably be a great tour. Um, that one is on Tuesday, also from one to five thirty. So with these, you kind of got to pick and choose, which is unfortunate. Um, but you, for these, I'm, I'm mentioning these ahead of time now because if the tickets for these events are not sold out, you can purchase them at the registration counter. Um, and uh, you got to present your ticket when the buses are loading. There's a bus that will actually take you there and bring you back. Um, so so uh, obviously a great opportunity. Other tours that are going on is you have the Design Science and Consulting Incorporated. Uh, not quite sure. I, I guess that's a company. We have Environmental Tectonics Corporation, National Aerospace Training and Research, NASTAR Center. So that'll be cool. That's on Thursday, October 4th uh, from 845 to 1215. So you got to get up pretty early to do that. But seems like that one might be worth it. Another one is the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia or CHOP Center for Simulation, Advanced Education and Innovation, University of Pennsylvania, uh, Perelman School of Medicine. So uh, I am – I really – hope we have somebody who goes to that and uh is able to help us out by doing some coverage oh i would love to talk to somebody that went to each one of them uh, amazing. i'm so jealous of the people who get to go to these i really am these are these are uh, so so cool it's the crux of like one of these events right because you've got the connections that can get a lot of people into these places and then you get like a real nice tour where you're like you're getting an explanation of what goes on and all that kind of good stuff yeah do so you go if you can do you have any other uh, things you're looking forward to, Blake? Uh, I've got one more, and so this this will come no, to no surprise to most of you anyway, is healthcare and decision-making and teamwork. So that's on Thursday, October 4th from 1045 to 1215. This is just going to be a large panel discussion through a bunch of different papers, right? And I just always find this stuff to be super interesting to me because like, when I was in grad school for human factors, I got very kind of sucked into the teamwork in SA and how you distribute that amount of situation awareness across people. And then let's translate that across like telecommunications. Right. And so that's kind of where my interest lies. And when we're pulling all these things like robotic surgery or even like monitoring, you know, step counts and uh, different, different kind of like cardiac events through your Fitbit and like how all this distributed information is coming together to inform your doctor's decisions, who then is like kind of guiding a surgeon's decisions. It's just, it's fun stuff. Well, Blake, you know what? I I do have one more thing I'm looking forward oh, to. What, oh, what do you have? You just know what it's going to be you sappy. Looking for? Yeah, you just know it's going to be sappy. It well, is. Blake, you know what? This is going to be our first HFES together. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we've never done this in this. We've somebody's. Oh, you've been gone, and I've been here trying yeah. to figure out how to record a podcast. Yeah, and well, and vice versa. You went to the healthcare symposium. This is the first oh, conference right, yeah. that you and I are going to together. It's going to be um, good, or it's so, going to be bad. I am looking forward to bolstering our friendship and potentially ruining our friendship. <laughs> potentially ruining our friendship because we have to stay up all night trying to edit these things together. Oh no, but goodness. honestly, I am I am legitimately looking forward to spending more time with the person I talk to once a week. I will get to talk to you every day that week. Every day and for five days. I know this kind of sounds like a ma- magical bromance moment, uh, but cue man, music. I am I am really a cue the music. You want to end this? <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, seriously, I'm really looking forward to hanging out with you that entire week, Blake, because if if uh, if I had to do interviews with anybody else, I'd, I'd want it to be you, my favorite co-host. Oh, yeah, I couldn't my do partner this without in crime. you. Oh, my God. And uh, honestly, I'm looking forward to uh, meeting all of our listeners, too. If you listen to the show and uh, you want to come by and say hi, I'm looking forward to meeting you guys. We've slowly grown over the last year. Um, I'm going to be handing out crisp high fives. Yeah, we are. We both are. <laughs> Chris High Fives. No, we've grown a lot over the last year, and we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you. Come by uh, so we can say our thanks to you, our listeners, uh, and talk about some Human Factors stuff at Human Factors and Ergonomic Society 2018. 2018. I Can't know. It's crazy. Well, that's it for today. Did we miss a pick that you are excited for? Let us know uh, all over our social media channels at A-Tractors Podcast. We're also on Slack. Uh, if you like what you hear and want to support the show, leave us a review on your podcast medium of choice or consider uh, supporting us on Patreon. Uh, and, of course, you can always reach us at our home on the web, humanfactorscast.com. I want to thank my co-host, Mr. Blake Arnsdorf, for breaking down all the stuff we're excited about, HFES. It's going to be so good. <laughs> Where can our listeners find you at HFES? You guys can find me at the Human Factors Podcast booth. Excellent. But you guys can also find me at Don't Panic UX across social media. <laughs> Special thanks to Jeff Olson for editing our video this week. You can also find me at the podcast booth, cutting Blake off from <laughs> before he says his social tags. Uh, and you can find me across social media at Nick underscore Rome. Thanks again for tuning in to Human Factors Cast. Come by, say hi. Until next time, it, it depends. depends. How many times do we have to say it depends? I don't know. A lot.